and tuck feet on the Husqvarna Viking are amazing. They really can add a nice embellishment to any of your projects, and there's a variety of ways to do it, from straight pin tucks to separating them out to adding decorative stitches or even giving them a little bit of shadow by inserting a color of thread underneath the pin tuck. We're going to cover all of that right now. So for the Viking, we have a variety of pin tuck feet, and each of them have different amounts of grooves on the bottom. With this, we'll need to match it up with a double needle that fits for that particular pin tuck foot. So five grooves here, seven grooves, and all the way up to nine grooves. The finer the groove on the foot, the finer a fabric that would be best suited to use with this particular selection. So if you have a little heavier fabric, go to the five groove. I'm gonna actually work with the seven groove and a 2.0 double needle is actually going to fit nicely in those grooves. So that's one way to know which size of double needle to use. Just set it in the groove. If it fits, then that's the one to use. So to thread up for a, for a double needle, I do wanna show you something that a lot of people don't even know is on their machine. When you go to thread it up, so let's go ahead and put the double needle in first. Make sure that you are on a straight stitch as you go into this particular part of your machine. And if you have the option for a double needle, or twin needle setting, that's gonna limit you. So if you do choose any decorative stitches, that will make sure you don't step off the edge of the foot. Now, if you look right here on your sewing machine, the first part where you, you come down when you thread the machine, there's actually a little fin in there. That fin will actually separate your two threads, giving them equal tension on both sides. So I have one spool on the machine and one spool on a secondary thread stand behind it. And then that way each spool will have its own easy guides here. So when I get to this first little part, I'm gonna separate the threads in my hand, put one on the right side of the fin and one on the left side, and then go ahead, place both the threads together in your hand and continue to thread the rest of the machine like normal. Now the next thing is, is that that double needle <laughs> and your needle threader are not going to line up. So that's where it's nice to actually have a handheld needle threader if you have a little trouble there. And our handheld needle threader we sell all the time on our website is a wonderful option. We've done videos on it, so you can check that out. It allows you just to take the needle or the thread, put it in the needle threader, slide down the needle. People also ask which thread goes in which needle, and it actually does not matter. So just pick one and thread it. There is a, even a little hook on the back of the needle threader that will even help pull it right on through. So lay the thread in there. Start about halfway up, slide all the way down, and push it in. Let me give that a try again. There we go. And a little hook, pull it right on through. When you're ready to start stitching on your project, when all possible, set it up so the pin tucks will go with the lengthwise grain of the fabric. On the front of a blouse, that would be going down from top to bottom, and it will really make those pin tucks handle nicely. Sometimes too, I will draw a line just to make sure everything stays nice and straight. Let that first pin tuck follow your line all the way down the fabric. When you're done, the first tuck may not look exactly as you had planned, but you will find once you do a couple more tucks beside it, that's when it really starts to look pretty. Now, this is where the pin tuck foot really comes into play. So if you wanna have a pin tuck to the right or left, just move the first one you did over. So when you put your presser foot down, it is laying in the next groove over. That will help keep all your pin tucks nice and straight. Now notice I'm actually using some colorful thread. So that way, as you are stitching, kind of even looks a little bit colorful there. All right, get to the end and see what we're working with. You can really go about um, separating these pin tucks out. You can have them be of different uh, widths. You can put some spacing in between there. Let's see what it looks like with a little space. So this time, instead of just moving it over one groove, let's move it over a couple grooves. We'll leave a little distance in between that first two, the first two pin tucks we sewed. The nice thing about pin tucks is you don't have to do a lot on your project. You really can just add a little embellishment here or there. 
And when you are working on a project and you know you're going to add some pin tucks, because this is going to draw up your fabric, make sure you leave a little extra around your pattern piece or maybe have your pattern piece rough drawed around. And then that way, as you uh, do the pin tucks, it draws it up. When you lay your pattern back on the finished project or finished fabric that's been tucked, then when you cut it out, you'll have the actual size you need. Okay, one more little row here. and you'll see the finished result. As you can see, it doesn't take long just to get some fun tucks to add to the project of what you're working on. Now with this, if you were to take, say, a decorative stitch and run with the pin tuck foot, this is a nice open scallop stitch that would add a little bit of embellishment. You also could add in and draw that first line maybe a little wavy and create a nice movement along your fabric. Again, spacing out the pin tucks, three lines, nice odd number, and then that way it just really adds to your, your project. The next thing I'm going to show you is a pin tuck foot that is called the raised seam foot with a plate. And that will be how we did these, where there is actually a colorful thread showing through the actual fabric. You know, so you need your darkest colors, a little cord is what we're gonna run through here. There's a different foot. It is gonna have a, a wider, not that one, there we go. This one, a wider base, so it's got three grooves. This would also be good for heavier fabrics. You're gonna switch over to a wider double needle, but the part I really wanna show you is the extra little plate. Now, you've seen the two holes in the Viking sewing machines, and this is one of those accessories that will snap into those holes. But right here, there is a, a tunnel, and so as you take your cord that you're gonna run underneath your fabric, that's gonna go through the tunnel, Pick the same stitch that we've been doing, stitch right on top of it, and as you sew, that's gonna give you the, the pin tuck that will have the shadowed through thread. The last little thing I wanted to show you is this t-shirt. Look how fun this is to add just a little color and decoration to around the neckline, and adding the different colors of thread really give it a neat accent.